Okay, let's cover the green cards now in our Ravnica Allegiance set review. Starting with Axbane Beast, 4 mana 3 4. Very solid limited card. Usually happy to put it in my deck. Occasionally I cut it, but it's pretty rare. Um, yeah, let's move on. Biogenic Ooze, 5 mana for a 2 2. Pretty bad. But when it enters the battlefield, you make another 2 2. Okay. Um, that's not really the enter the battlefield trigger that I'd want to terribly abuse in my, you know, blink kind of deck, but I guess it's something. Um, at the beginning of your end step, put a 1-1 one, one counter on each ooze you control. So, if this doesn't get killed immediately, right, and you have, they have to untap before they kill it, you get two 3-3s, three which we had from Ixalan, or Rivals of Ixalan. There was two 3-3s three with Trample, I think. Um, that never really saw any constructed play. This, if it survives longer, can do even more. It also has this activated ability for one green, green, green. You can make a 2-2 two, two ooze. So also, if you have a lot of mana, it can do more. And if you have a lot of mana, it can even do more if they can kill it immediately, right? You cast this, it enters the battlefield, they put the trigger, you put the trigger on the stack, they kill it in response, you have four more mana, you can make another ooze. Um, also, if they can kill it immediately, it's a downside. Seems like another lackluster mythic to me, maybe. Um, but I could also see this one seeing some standard play. Maybe. Maybe. Um, if there's a green deck, either that has a ton of mana, or... Yeah, I don't know. The, the problem is, I think, usually they're going to be able to kill this pretty quickly, and you're mostly going to be either left with a 2-2 two, two, or a 3-3, three, three, which isn't nothing, but isn't worth it in Constructed. Um, in Limited, it's just great. They're likely not going to be able to kill it immediately. You're at least going to be left with a 3-3. Three, three. That card was pretty good in Limited, and if they can't kill it, which sometimes they're not going to be able to, then it starts to run away with the game if you got to untap with it. Um, also, the plus one, plus one counters might have enough synergies. I don't know. Biogenic Upgrade. Distribute three, six mana. Distribute three one, one counters on one, two, or three target creatures. And then you double the number of plus one, plus one counters on each of those creatures. So, if you don't have any plus one, plus one counters on other creatures before you cast this, um, then let's say you have three creatures, you're going to spread around three counters. You're putting six, six worth of stats onto the battlefield for six mana. It's okay, but not fantastic. Of course, this is not quite the base case. Oh, I guess you're doubling all of them, so it doesn't matter. You could put them all on one creature and you're giving it plus six, plus six, right, forever. So you're getting 6-6 six, six out of this if you don't have any counters to start with. You get to distribute it more or less how you want. Um, that card is probably not playable. Well, it's roughly playable in limited, but it's not great. Um, although even that would sometimes just win games. Um, in green, both of the guilds have plus one, plus one me counter mechanics. So you're probably going to have one or two counters, there's a good chance, on creatures already, in which case this is giving six plus the number of plus one plus one counters those creatures already had that you put on this, so it's giving seven or eight, which is pretty good, like, especially if this is on multiple creatures, um, it's going to be very hard for them to compete with the size of your creatures, and if they don't have a lot of removal um, that's very unconditional, then it's going to be tough for them to deal. This is six mana, you do get quasi haste out of it. Um, I think this card's actually going to be pretty good. We haven't seen that much in the way of removal that deals with this very well. There is that bounce spell in blue, a couple of them, so do watch out for that. But unconditional removal, there isn't just a ton of um, that is going to work super efficiently. So I think this card could be pretty good. Obviously not, not something that I expect to see play in standard, although I guess maybe if you can really synergize a ton, then yeah, I don't really see it anyway. 
end rays forerunners. So this is like a greater hoof behemoth, kind of. It's bigger to start with. It gives your creatures vigilance, but only your other creatures get the bonus, and it's only plus two, plus two. So it's basically worse in almost every way. Uh, if you're just straight up casting it by itself, it's better. Um, I guess it also has vigilance. But like in older formats, you're basically always going to prefer Crater Hoof. However, you don't have Crater Hoof in standard. Can this see play in standard? Um, maybe? I don't... There is a token deck that could play this and get good use out of it. But I don't know that you need to play an 8-drop in that deck. You, you, they're already playing like Flower Flourish, I think. And that obviously isn't as good as this when you do it, but it's close enough, and you're not going to have this 8-drop rotting in your hand when you can't cast it. So, I don't know. Maybe there's some kind of a ramp deck that also plays enough mana dorks that this is okay, but usually then you're having to tap the mana dorks to cast this. So I'm not really seeing this, but... I mean, it's a very powerful effect. Um, let's move on to Enraged. Uh, oh, and in Limited, yeah, 8 is a lot of mana in Limited. It will probably win you the game if you last that long. But 8 is a lot of mana. And this is not, like, Ugin powerful. So, unless the format is, like, quite slow, and I think it's going to be slow, but not that slow, I'm not sure that End Race 4 Runners is really where you want to be. Uh, okay, Enraged Ceratok, really strong limited card. 4 mana 4-4 four, four is already pretty good. Um, this camp being blocked by cheap creatures means that it can't, you can't chump it, basically. Um, not cheap creatures, but low-power creatures. So, uh, and you can't, and it's a lot harder to double block also. So, just a, a really solid card, um, but not like a bomb or anything. Gatebreaker Ram, now this is a gate payoff as well. So if there's going to be a gate deck, this is going to be another one of the big reasons why. And yeah, so it's a 2-2, but it gets plus one, plus one for each gate you control. And if you have at least two, then it has Vigilance and importantly Trample. Um, Yeah, again, in Limited, you need to have at least one gate in play for this to be good enough to play. If you have two gates in play, this is very good going to have two gates in play by turn three or turn four even it's going to be pretty tough to make that happen you're going to have to have you know like the eight nine ten gates but if you get like five or six gates this is a perfectly playable card because you're going to have it's going to be at least a three three if you get three gates it's like mediocre because it's probably not going to be better than a three three very often so you want to have extra gates before you want to play this at all but if you build around it and get a lot of gates then it can be very good in Constructed, if you have your deck with, like, all gates, this is a huge, trampling, vigilant thing that your opponent's going to have to deal with. Unfortunately, in Constructed, they're going to have removal spells that can deal with it much more likely than in other st formats, so still not having great hope for this, but, um, yeah, if there is a Constructed gate deck, this isn't it. Uh, I guess unless it's, like, a Mazes End Constructed gate deck in an older format. In which case, it's probably not playing creatures at all. Um, Gift of Strength. Yeah, I think this is a reprint. It's a fine trick. Um, Growth Tramber Guardian. In Limited, this is pretty good. Uh, you're probably not getting an extra copy of it, so it's not doing the search thing. But it's a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two that you pay 3-mana on turn 3, and you have a 4-4 four -four that can even attack on turn 3. That's already really good. Um, as a 5-mana 4-4 four -four later in the game... That's not fantastic, but, you know, it's a later in the game card, it's okay, and it was good early. So it's, like, quite good and limited. It's not like, again, it's not the most bro broken bomb ever. It's probably roughly similarly powered, these two cards, in limited. Um, but they're both pretty darn good. Uh, in Constructed, this card also looks really good. Um, you can either do the same thing, and that's just, like, reasonable to okay. 
you do have to be a little bit worried about getting blown out by a cheap removal spell from your opponent, which they're reasonably likely to have. If you know the format, um, then you know how likely they are to be having it, and you can play around it accordingly. Um, however, there's also some other things you can do with it. Uh, there's some ways that you can put plus one, plus one counters on it, otherwise in Constructed. And because you are going to have four of these in your deck in Constructed, you just then get to start chaining and getting card advantage also off of your reasonably efficient creature to start with. So, uh, yeah, this card's just excellent. Gruel Beastmaster, totally a limited card. Um, this looks a little bit better than the Menace one to me. So, four mana, two, two, haste that pumps something plus two, plus oh. Uh, yeah, so that's four damage the turn that it comes into play. Um, you know, if it's unblocked, now it is easier to block. But, uh, yeah, that's not nothing. And then if you put a counter on it, you give something plus three plus so. Again, four mana for a three three is not the greatest, but not the worst. And if you have just some small creature, you make it hit like a real creature. If you have an evasive creature, you get in for three extra damage. Um, right, if you have like a 1-1 one, one or something, then you make it hit like a 4x, which gets effectively 4 extra damage in, or makes your 1-1 one, one trade for a real card. Um, having said that, I don't think this is the most fantastic card ever. It really wants you to have another creature to be great, and um, it's not even like great, great in that scenario. It's only good. Guardian Project, I don't think this is very good. Um, certainly in Constructed, it's really hard to draw enough cards off of it, and it's just too so slow. Maybe it's a sideboard card against some kind of a non-counterspell control deck? I don't really see it. Um, but kind of like Lifecrafter's Bestiary was, but you're going to have more of the same named cards in Constructed than in Limited. In Limited, it's so very slow. If the format's super slow, maybe you can play it. Maybe. You are mostly going to have differently named creatures, but like if you play two creatures off of this, then it's drawn you two cards, and it's been after this, then it's drawing you two cards, and it's kind of been slow in doing that. If you draw, if you so you kind of want to be playing at least three for it to be you know worth it on rate, which okay in limited you you really might do. And so if the format is kind of slow, this might be playable in limited. You really need to have a lot of creatures with different names and to be able to deal with a fast deck if that is a thing that you have to worry about in the format. So it requires a lot of things, but it might be playable and limited. It might be very good and limited if the format's real slow. But um, yeah, I don't really see it in Constructed at all. On the other hand, Incubation Druid looks like a very good Constructed card. First of all, two mana for a mana dork that makes you know any color that your lands could already make. That's um, reasonable already. It's not the greatest. Um, the ability to pay five to make it a three five, um, that helps. Uh, and that's not nothing. Like really, you can attack and block with it sometimes. So that's something. Um, that turning this into making, like a, basically turns this into a gilded lotus. That's definitely something. Although I'm not exactly sure what you're doing with all that mana. Um, there are things you can do with all that mana. But then if there's any way to put counters on this like more incidentally without necessarily having to adapt it, then maybe this can start making three mana as soon as turn three. And if you can do that, it's like you're ritualing up and you can really make stuff very fast in some cases. So this looks like one of the better constructed cards in the set to me. Obviously it needs a little support, but I think there is enough. So yeah, I expect this to be a constructed player. And then in limited, um, yeah, just a mana dork is usually fine in limited. And then the three, five body is gonna be much more relevant in limited. Um, making the extra, extra mana, maybe less so, but yeah. Mammoth Spider, uh, this is a reprint, it's good. I like this art too. Um, but yeah, it's there's not a lot that attacks through it in the ground or on the air. 
in the in the air or on the ground, not on the air. Anyway, um, there's not too much that attacks through it, and so I would often just play like three of these in a deck, in a draft deck, and and then eventually have something that I would go over the top with, right? Um, but even the three five reach itself, like you get enough of them in play, you can start attacking stuff. Open the gates is a lay of the land that can find a gate. If you're playing more than two colors, then this should be in your limited deck, um, assuming that green isn't the splash, anyway. Um, if you're playing constructed, I don't really expect this to see any play, unless maybe you're playing a five color deck. Maybe. Um, yeah, Rampage of the Clans. Uh, Oh, and you're not playing it in less than a three-color deck in limited. I don't think it's just not not good enough. I don't I don't think. Anyway, rampage of the clans. Um, destroy all artifacts and enchantments for each permanent. Destroy this way. Its controller creates a three-three green centaur token. So if you're trying to blow up your opponent's stuff with this, giving them a bunch of three threes is a pretty hefty price to pay. Now maybe you have a way you can deal with all those three threes, or somehow all the three threes is entering for your opponent is good for you. I don't think there is something like that in standard right now, but you know, I don't know, maybe. Um, but more, I think this is going to be something that you're trying to do where you've created a bunch of, you have a bunch of artifacts and enchantments. And how are you doing that? Well, not in limited. This card looks basically unplayable in limited to me, but in constructed, um, there's some ways to make treasure. So if that white treasure making card from earlier in the set has a home, I think it might be with this card. Um, is a very, very janky way to win the game. Uh, there's some other ways to make a bunch of treasure though. Red has treasure trove, Captain Lannery Storm. There's treasure map. Um, there's, uh, Brass's Bounty. There's some ways you can make a lot of treasure. And then if you play this on their end step, you untap with a bunch of 3-3 centaurs and attack them with everything. I don't really believe in it, but if you're looking for a janky, you know, you want to jank them out in a totally out of left field way, I wouldn't sleep entirely on it. Um, I don't think it's going to be like a good deck, but it could be a fun deck. Um, and not that uncompetitive that you just lose every game. Rampaging Redhorn. Uh, this is the uh, a good rate on a Riot creature, so I haven't been that impressed with a lot of the other ones before, but 5 mana 5-5 five, five is already a good rate in Limited. 5 mana 4-4 four, four Haste, already also a pretty good rate in Limited, so I think this is going to be one of the better green commons. It's just got keyword big. Regenesis, on the other hand, yeah, five mana to get two permanent cards only to your hand seems a bit too inefficient, even if it is an instant to me. I, I don't really see this seeing play. Maybe there's some really weird combo. It's hard for me to imagine that that would be worth it. Like in Constructed, there's an X spell that can be this, right? It's like XX green, and you got to regrow X things, and that really isn't seeing any play. And this, you have to cast it for five and get two things. So it's worse than that. It's an instant, but who cares? Like, I mean, it's not nothing. I'd rather have it be an instant than a sorcery, but it's not a big thing on this effect, I don't think. So I don't really see it. I also don't see it in limited, unless the format is absurdly grindy. Uh, it's just not efficient enough for something that doesn't affect the board. Root Snare is a fog. Yeah, um, don't play it in limited, um, in constructed, there's like a turbo, I guess in limited, maybe if they have the, uh, whatever the trumpet blast is that's in this set, uh, you could maybe sideboard it in, mm, I'd still rather not usually, uh, in constructed, there may be a turbo fog deck, obviously this goes in that, I think this is already legal, so you know, whatever. Uh, Sagittar's Volley. Destroy target creature with flying. It deals one damage to each creature with flying your opponent's control. Um, 
yeah, so if there's enough Thopters or 1-1 one, one Spirits going around, then the second part of this can be good. If there's enough big flyers going around, then the first part could be good. So I, I think in limited, this is going to be a card you sideboard in pretty often. In sealed, you might even main deck one. I would not main deck one, I don't think, in um, in draft. In constructed, maybe this is a sideboard card. Um, I have looked for this kind of thing before. Usually I want to be able to have it be bigger for the global effect like I want a windstorm but um, okay it's maybe going to be playable I think usually you, you're not going to play it for the plummet effect I think plummet is actually even legal and there's you know some things that do plummet or disenchant that cost three already so you would really need there to be a lot of 1-1 flyers going around for this to be constructed playable so I don't think it's going to be but um, it's not the most unconstructed playable card or anything. Sarali Caretaker. This card does not seem good enough for a limited. One mana 03 Defender. No. Um, needing to tap two creatures to make a mana. No, not really. Um, constructed, yeah, if there's the walls deck, then this probably fits in, but it's not like amazing. Uh, Sorrowform Hybrid really good solid limited card. Um, two mana 2-2 two, two is fine. The ability to do something late game, like we talked about on that one mana 1-1 one, one flyer in the blue part, um, is good. And you're gonna hit six mana usually, and adapting four, yeah, turning it into a 6-6. Six, six. Uh, you know, six mana for a 6-6, six, six, also fine. Eight mana for a 6-6, six, six, bit expensive, but you gotta do it over installments, so that helps a lot. Um, obviously nothing in Constructed. Silhana Wayfinder. When it enters the battlefield, you gotta look at the top four. You put a creature or land on top of your library. The rest don't even go in your graveyard. Yeah. Um, tutoring to the top. It's not even tutoring, just like filtering to the top. Not a very good effect. It might be vaguely playable and limited. Um, particularly if you're multicolor, it can help fix your mana a little bit or help find you gas. Like it's probably a fine-ish and limited, kind of similar to that uh, blue two drop where you scryed to. This is going to be similar to that, um, but certainly not amazing. And in Constructed, I don't see, expect it to see any play, unless you really, really need to be looking for something very specific where you're already playing, you know, all of the search five for a particular creature. There's some creature combo deck, then maybe this is another way to search out that creature is okay-ish, but I generally don't see it happening. Steeple Creeper is a cool name. Uh, three mana, four two, already a fine card. Not great, but fine playable card in limited. Um, if you can give it flying, that's even much better because four two on a flyer is pretty big. So it's a, a good card in green blue and a perfectly okay card otherwise. Stony Strength, uh, yeah. So putting a counter on a thing, as we've seen, there's a number of things that trigger from having a counter put on them. So that gives us some extra upside. But even just to counter an untapping um, as a reasonable combat trick in limited, um, well, it is a reasonable combat trick in limited. You can do it on attacks. You can surprise block with it. Um, so I'm pretty high on this card in limited. I don't think it's great or anything. But again, think it's a pretty good combat trick. And we've seen a few of those now. So do be aware that they exist in this format. Um, I also think this could maybe see constructed play, um, but you would really need to, there to be a lot of good payoffs for the counters going on your creatures. We've seen some really good payoffs, but I don't really think it's there, but it wouldn't, like, again, it wouldn't stun me the most. Kind of like the Gates deck or the Defenders deck. Um, Sylvan Brush Strider, 3 mana, 3, 2, you gain 2 life on entering the battlefield. Limited filler, you could play it, you could cut it. I usually like to cut it, but it's fine, especially if you're getting attacked a lot to board in. Territorial Boar, 2 mana, 2-2. Two, two. Whenever a creature with power 4 or greater enters the battlefield under your control, it gets plus 1, plus 1 until, in Vigilance until end of turn. So, um, I was kind of down on the 4 power matter stuff in other colors, but as we've seen, and as we will continue to see, green has a lot more of that than the other colors. So, this is one that I'm 
I'm higher on. Um, it's also worth noting that for Riot, uh, it enters with that counter. So if you choose the counter on a 3-3, it enters with the counter, so it turns it into a 4-4. So that will trigger this. It's not a triggered ability that it enters as a 3-3 and then you put a counter on it. No, it enters as a 3-3 as a with a counter, so it enters as a 4-4. So that will trigger this, um, but already just like a bear is already fine. And then the ability to be a 3-3 three, three later um, sometimes with Vigilance um, makes this a card that I'm going to be happy to play in basically every green deck. Titanic Brawl. Uh, yeah, it's one mana instant speed removal if you're targeting a creature with a counter on it of yours. Um, you know, one mana instant speed fight spell. That might even fringe be constructed playable. Um, right, Prey Upon has been kind of close, and okay, Pounce wasn't ever really that close, but Satessan Tactics saw a little bit of play. The fight spells aren't that far off all the time, um, particularly in the right matchups, so it might see some constructed play. It's going to be, I think, very good in limited. Um, one mana fight spell, like Prey Upon is usually pretty good. Um, this costing two, like we've seen Pounce was okay. Um, so two mana, if it were never costing one, would only be pretty good. I think though that because both of the mechanics deal with plus one, plus one counters, there's a reasonable number of your creatures are going to have plus one, plus one counters and be big enough that you're going to be able to get this for one mana often enough. Being able to sometimes use it as a combat trick is just a big game. So, um, yeah, watch out for this. Tower Defense looks grossly unplayable and limited. Um, it really looks just like a plant for this Walls deck, which, again, I don't think is a thing. But if it is a thing, then this card is probably in it, because you get to uh, Anthem your team a lot. Because uh, the Walls deck also deals damage equal to its toughness rather than its power when it is dealing damage, mostly. Um, okay, our last three monocolored cards. Troll Breed Guardian. Like I said before, 5 mana for a 5-5 five five is already a decent rate. Being able to adapt this and only for 3 mana into a 7-7, seven seven, so you can, like, on turn 6, you can at least threaten to adapt this, and it gives everything trample, first of all, as soon as you play it, so it has some effect even if you play it pre-combat on turn 5. On turn six, you get a seven-seven trampler and have two or three mana up. Um, yeah, this this looks like a really good, really hard to beat uncommon. Because again, we haven't seen much removal that deals with big creatures. So really good and limited, uh, grossly unplayable and constructed, too expensive. Um, Wilderness Reclamation is the opposite. It's grossly unplayable and limited. I think uh, just untapping your lands, you can't build your deck with enough mana sinks basically to do enough to have this be worth a card in your deck in limited um i know there's a lot of adapt stuff but i just don't see it happening <coughs> and keep in mind it only helps you actually have extra mana um if you break it up and basically in your opponent's turn you get extra mana um or on your end step in constructed however uh, there is a case to be made this is the best card in the set. Now, I don't really buy that, um, but it can give you a lot of mana to play things at instant speed. So if you're trying to play a 10 mana instant and you play this on turn four and then turn five, you play your fifth land. Uh, in your end step, this is going to trigger. You tap all your lands, make five mana. This trigger resolves. You untap all your lands. You tap them all again. You make five mana. You have 10 mana you can spend on an instant. Um, yeah, that's a lot of mana. Um, so you can do big things with this card in Constructed, um, because you can play a lot of instants or flash creatures or, you know, things of that nature. Obviously, you can also just, like, the turn you play this, all your lands on tap, you have four mana up. You can also just, you know, play a three drop or a five drop or something, untap everything. Right, there's that Azorius mechanic wants you to play instant in your main phase sometimes. Well, this helps you with that. You can have a deck full of instants and some of them play in your main phase, right? Um, so this can really ramp your mana a ton. 
I'm not as high on it as some other people because, first of all, I expect the format to be super fast um, from what I'm looking at, the standard format. Super, super fast. So I don't really have time to do all this, especially if that you know 10 mana spell isn't winning you the game, which I don't know that it is. Um, it does a lot, but I don't know that it's actually just winning the game. Um, or gaining, you know, 12 life or something. Um, the other thing, so first of all, I don't know that you're going to have time for it. Second of all, if you're building a deck that's expecting to have that much mana, you're not going to have this card that often to, to necessarily be able to work with it. Third of all, this thing can get countered um, or destroyed. And that's going to hurt it. I think enchantment removal, there's enough enchantments. People are going to be packing some if, in their sideboard, if not in their main deck. And I expect there's probably going to be some kind of counterspell decks. So, at least, again, at least in the sideboard. So, I think there's going to be a lot of format pressures that are going to be keeping this down. Um, but it certainly lets you play really big things if you can do them at instant speed or spread, up over, spread out over time. And totally unplayable and limited. Last for green, and last in the monocolored, we have Wrecking Beast, which is a 7 mana, 6-6 six, six with Riot and Trample. Yeah, so this is um, a bit expensive. 7 mana is a lot. Uh, like, we had that 8 mana thing towards the start of this, and I wasn't sure, because 8 mana is a lot. Now, 7 is significantly less than 8, because... Well, it's one mana less, but that's probably two or three turns uh, on average before you're finding your eighth mana source as opposed to your seventh. Um, so that's a significant amount of time. Um, if you're playing a seven drop, you could do worse than this. Six mana, six or seven mana, six six trample haste uh, is a big beating out of nowhere. Um, although with all the riot in this set, your opponent should probably be at least a little bit watching out for haste creatures um, and so if they can play around it they will be more than they would in a normal set but seven mana seven seven trample is usually going to be the biggest thing on the board also so you know it's not the worst thing ever um, again I would usually rather be wanting to play a cheaper spell though I think in the right format or in the right matchup or if the format is slow enough this gets better so does that eight drop rare though Anyway, that's it for green. Uh, join us soon for multicolored artifacts and lands, which I think I'm going to do all at once because there's very few artifacts and lands, even though there's a lot of multicolored. Anyway, we'll catch you then.